Enamel is the tissue which forms a protective covering over the crown of a tooth. It is the hardest biological tissue of the body. This is because it is mineralized to 96% with organic matter being only 4%. The mineralized portion is formed of hydroxyapatite crystals which are cylindrical in shape with a hexagonal cross section. They are about 70 nanometers wide, 25 nanometers thick and have a variable length. Whereas the organic part is made by various enamel proteins. The basic structural unit of enamel is the enamel rod or enamel prism. They are cylindrical in shape running from the dentino enamel junction to the enamel surface. Their number in each tooth is estimated to be around 5 million to 12 million. Now let us see the dimensions of the enamel rods. The average diameter of enamel rod is 4 microns. But this is only the average as the diameter of enamel rods changes from one end to another. They are thinner at the dentino enamel junction and thicker at the enamel surface. The ratio of these two diameters is almost 1 is to 2. This increase in diameter of enamel rods from dentino enamel junction to enamel surface is because the area of enamel surface is more than the area of dentino enamel junction. Now coming to the length of enamel rods. As we have seen, each enamel rod runs from the dentino enamel junction to the enamel surface. So the length of enamel rods is not fixed but actually depends on the thickness of the enamel. Therefore, they are the longest in the cuspal or incisal ridge area where they may reach up to 2.5 mm and shortest in the cervical area. But the actual length of each rod is more than the thickness of the enamel. This is because enamel rods don't have a straight course but have a tortuous wavy course. So the individual length becomes longer than the enamel thickness. This wavy course is the reason for the light and dark bands called the hunter shagger bands. This wavy pattern gets exaggerated in the cuspal areas of teeth to form gnarled enamel. Now coming to the directions of the rods. Their directions depends on the area of enamel where they are present. Like they are vertical in the cusp area and incisal ridge area. They are horizontal in the middle third and diagonal in the cervical third. In deciduous teeth, the rod's directions are same as permanent teeth except in the cervical third where the rods are not diagonal but horizontal. Now let us see the appearance of enamel rods. In longitudinal section, the enamel rods show cross striations that is appearance of light and dark bands as they are deposited incrementally. However, in transverse section, enamel gives the characteristic picture of fish scale appearance. Each enamel rod is separated from other by a rod sheath. If we revisit the chemical composition of enamel, the 96% inorganic matter formed of hydroxyapatite crystals is present in the enamel rods, whereas the 4% of organic matter is seen in this rod sheath. All these features are seen under light microscope, but further study of enamel rods can only be done under higher magnification. Under higher magnification, in transfer section, the enamel rods give a keyhole shape or paddle shape pattern. The white part is called the head or body of the enamel rod and narrow part is the tail of the enamel rod. However, in longitudinal section, we see the long axis of the rods in a pattern referred to as rods and interrods. Therefore, to put it simply, in transverse section, the rods give the keyhole pattern with head part and tail part, whereas in longitudinal section, the same rods give the rod and interrod appearance. That is, in transfer section, the head part is called rod in longitudinal section, and in transfer section, the tail part is called interrod in longitudinal section. The only difference between rod and interrod or head and tail area is the orientation of the hydroxyapatite crystals within them. In head part of the rod, the hydroxyapatite crystals are parallel to the long axis of the rod. In the tail part, the hydroxyapatite crystals are at 65 degrees to the long axis. This change in angulation can be clearly seen in the longitudinal section. As mentioned, the rod sheath is the layer of organic matrix separating enamel rods from one another. In the enamel, if we see the orientation of rods, the head is always towards the cusp and the tail part is always towards the cervical line. Now why the enamel rods have a complicated keyhole shape and why not a simple cylindrical shape? The answer lies in the percentage of mineralization in enamel. If the rods are cylindrical in shape, a lot of space is left in between which is filled with organic matter that would occupy more than 4% of enamel. 
whereas the keyhole shape provides closer stacking of rods that limits the organic matter to only 4%. Now why are rods and interrods formed differently? The reason lies in the ameloblasts. In the life cycle of ameloblasts during the formation of enamel, the ameloblasts have an extension called the Tomes process. This Tomes process has a non-secretory side and a secretory side. The secretory side has again two parts, a proximal part which is of the flat surface on the ameloblast itself and a distal part on the Tomes process. These two surfaces release hydroxyapatite crystals at different angles. The distal part produces crystals parallel to the long axis of the enamel rod thus forming the rod, whereas the proximal part produces crystals at an angle of 65 degrees thus forming the inter rod. With this arrangement, it is observed that each keyhole shaped rod is formed by the contribution of four ameloblasts, and each ameloblast contributes in the formation of four enamel rods. That was about enamel rods, but there is something known as aprismatic enamel. Aprismatic enamel is a layer of outer enamel 20 microns to 100 microns of thickness. It is called so because no enamel rods can be seen in it. It is more mineralized than rest of the enamel. Now how is it so formed? Aprismatic enamel is the last layer of enamel formed by ameloblast and by this point ameloblasts lose their Thames process. All hydroxyapatite crystals formed are perpendicular to the surface parallel to each other, therefore there is no change in angulation of crystals.